Hey you guys, how you doing? I've uh, just been away for three days, been on a, a workshop with some business associates planning a new book. Um, I, I, I took my, uh, my iPad with me. I've had a really weird few days with the old chess. Um, I wasn't feeling totally confident, you know, like cutting out the coffee and stuff like that. Wasn't feeling all that confident in my rapids. I've just been playing loads of five minute blitz and I absolutely tanked. I've dropped from something like 1459, which I was like a week ago, something like that, down to like 1150. It's really mad, really mad, but you know what? It's a game, so I'm about 1200 now and you know, I might do some, some blitz play. I just feel like I, you know, you, you can't just get worse at chess overnight. That just, that's impossible. It has to be to do with your energy, your focus, your, you know, how well your body's doing. And I think my body's going through a period of adjustment right now. So it's, it's all fine. It's all good. <clears throat> so we're back on the horse. By the way, we've got something very, very, very exciting coming up for February. Um, particularly for Chess Bootcamp Club members are going to find out about it first. Uh, just a, a new way of, of training your chess which should be a lot of fun and will also accelerate you quicker than just watching heaps and heaps of videos with IMs just playing blitz and stuff like that. Anyway, um, so today's video for me to get back in the saddle and to try and get my head around this chess thing again, um, I've just picked up three games that have been shared on the Chess Bootcamp Club on chess.com. Um, all of them are sub 1000. So for all you sub 1000s out there, you know, watch up, watch out, listen out. This is all for you, right? The first, four, the first one is from Bot Boy, who's rated 797, playing Delayed Jack at 776, and it's not a long one. Bot Boy, we've talked about this. You and your grob opening. Ah, oh, well, I don't know if you if you've made punishing dumbass openings yet, but. Already, it belongs in Punishing Dumbass Openings. Anyway, um, I, no, I think it was in the uh, the arena that we had. But seriously, dude? No, no. The no. bottom line, guys, if you are sub <laughs> 1,000, if you probably, if you are sub 1,500, you shouldn't be playing crazy-ass openings like the Grob. Right, the problem with this is that pawn is already under attack. Okay, yes, you can get your bishop out into the board, but if you're gonna play, why not play g3, the king's fianchetto opening, right? Then if you put your pawn on, on there, it's defended twice. And it can't be captured by this bastard here. Right, and you can still fianchetto your bishop. Stop it, but boy, been told. Okay, now h3 to defend the pawn. h3 is a useless move in the opening. He's only having to play it to defend the pawn because he played that instead of playing that. All right? It does nothing to help this bishop, which you know could already get to g2. There's nothing to help this bishop. It's a crazy opening. Anyway, and his opponent, of course, just grabs the center. Thank you very much. I will take the full center. And now d4 contesting the center. Okay. <clears throat> Jack um, is happy to live with the tension and instead doubles up the attack. Absolutely the right thing to do, right? Don't go exchanging pieces, or don't go, don't go do anything in the opening phase of the game that you don't need to do if you can develop. So, he doesn't need to change, right? Let's go back and move. <clears throat> so let's say Jack takes this pawn, right? So suddenly Jack is left with one pawn out on the board, and Bot Boy has, been allowed to develop his queen. What's more, the queen is now looking at g7, which means that this bishop is tied to the defense of g7 and can't develop, therefore, blah, blah, blah. You know, slows everything down. This is a much better move from Jack because he's now got two attackers on this pawn and only one defender, right? So now, Bot Boy has something that he needs to respond to. So for me right here, I think knight f3 is okay, but he might want to push f4 at some point. I think c3 is perfectly reasonable as well. Um, I probably wouldn't play bishop e3. I think c3 looks fine. You know, opens up a diagonal for the queen, shuts off a diagonal to the king, right, with the pawn on here. 
So it might be good. Um, okay, so we play like knight f3. So obviously the plan is not to break with f4. And okay, now <clears throat> it's those two things. Yes, it hits the knight, but it also unattacks d4. So now the knight is free to move because the queen is defending this and it's only attacked once, yeah? So the knight's now free to move. But I mean, yeah, you could go there. Queen can't take, but it could get kicked out by a pawn. Can't go there because queen takes. That's just horrible, and that's going back to where he started, and that's horrible too because it blocks in the bishop. So I think delayed jack is doing very well here. Okay, this is the more aggressive idea. Stick the knight in the center. That is the center. Saying, go on then, do you want to trade knights? Are you up for it? And we trade knights, boys and girls. Action. We have action. Now at this point, I like jack. You've got to like jack, right? Bot boys develop pawns are over here. They've played no part in the game whatsoever. He's wasted two moves shuffling those up the board, playing shove hate me with pawns, right? Jack is now threatening to capture in the center. If bot boy captures away from the center, it leaves Jack with two pawns right in the middle of the board, right? And if he captures here, it invites the knight just to capture straight off. There we go. That's exactly what happens, right? And you've got to fancy Jack. It's all about Jack right now. And these pawns, mate, <clears throat> not happy. So in for a penny and for a pound, let's just shove Gary up the board, right? Gary is on a suicide mission. We're kicking the knight. I mean, it's not the worst move in the world. Again, this knight can't go to either of these squares because he's on a dark square, right? Um, if he goes here, then e3 would open him up to an attack from the queen. If he goes here, again, it shuts off the bishop. So he's got a similar problem to Bot Boy had, right? Now, I would definitely consider e3 now with the discovery, again, putting the pressure back on your opponent. However, if you played that, there is a problem, okay? You've got to say, if I do this, what's the best thing my opponent can do, right? So let's look at this move just for a minute, okay? What else does this move do? Because it looks like, oh, look, discovered attack by the queen. Now the knight has to move. And he can't go there, and he can't go there. In fact, I win the knight. No, you don't. Because the other thing that this, this move does is it blocks the bishop's defense of this pawn. And if you block the bishop's defense of this pawn, out comes the queen. And if the queen comes out, not only grabs the pawn, but also defends the knight. So you've got to think these things through. Okay, so we have h4, okay, which is a better move. We're still, Gary and Harry are just, I don't, it's, this is insane. And, and Jack now pushes g6. So Jack ain't going to be putting his king safe on g8 anytime soon. If he's going to think about casting, he's going that way, right? So let's see what happens now. Now we have e3, but now the queen can't take that because it's defended by the pawn. This is the randomest game. And now h6. Huh. Okay. And now, boys and girls, it all kicks off. Bishop out to, F, to, uh, to b5, but surely this is just begging for c6. Right? You want to push this move if you can, particularly if, if you haven't got knight problems, you know, but there's no knight here. So this is no problem whatsoever for him just to push c6 and kick the bishop back to there or there or there. Not there, right? Just kick the bishop away, right? On white side, because the, the, the nice thing about c3, c3 is a very different animal to f3. You don't want to push f3 because it opens this up, right? Opens up the diagonal to the king. C3 is completely different. It actually blocks the diagonal to the king and instead opens up the diagonal for the queen, which is great. So C3 is a nice move to play in general, right? Provided it doesn't trap in your knight. And here we could play knight here. Sometimes you can play knight here, right? Um, Jack here plays bishop d7, <coughs> which is disadvantageous. Right, why is it disadvantageous, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look what's this, you know, you have to say, anytime you make a move, what am I changing here, right? 
this move would have been far simpler, okay? You're not only hitting the bishop, right? This pawn is on a defended square. It's defended by a pawn, which is better than being defended by a piece, right? And you've completed a nice light square pawn chain, right? Here, you've undefended the d-pawn, right? And the, the queen takes the d-pawn, and now you've also, by the queen taking this, you've then undefended e4. And it's all going Pete Tom. Now we take a pawn here for no good reason whatsoever. Um, because queen e5, right? Okay. Well, I was thinking queen e5 here, giving check and a fork on the rook. But queen e4, <clears throat> and now we're actually targeting this as well, potentially. So let's say that here black actually resigns. Here we've got this. There's no way to block whatsoever. So we have to play that right. We can't take the knight, we can't take the pawn. I mean, it's not all over. We're two pawns up, but the king has been forced to move, right? So, scrappy game, but please, bot boy, for the sake of my health, if not your own, stop playing the grob opening, please. Anyway, let's move on. Game number two. This is James uh, Januszka against P.B. Morris from the US of A. And James is rated 592, and P.B. is rated 688, and we have E4, E5, and we have Knight to C3. So I'm guessing James is the one on the, uh, the group, seeing he's playing O Vienna. Okay, and now are we going to see F4? Oh, oh, yes. The Vienna Gambit, boys and girls, is on the board. Oh, oh. Now I have to confess, I don't know what to do in this situation. I think surely you just take the pawn. Free pawn, hit knight, what's not to like, okay? You're also unprotecting the square on black's account. So if you take here, you then get to play d4, defended by the queen, hit the bishop too. But no, knight to f3, what the? I mean, look, it's developing. So, you know, there's a case to argue, let's develop, right? <clears throat> and it's good. It's why I love this Vienna Gambit. You know, when you get to push f4, you get to bring out your knight, covers these squares, it covers the center, you know? But, oh, wow. Okay, so now, <clears throat> this is the classic pattern. You know, anytime the bishops come out to these squares, right? The ones flanking the center, okay? I.e. your fourth rank. So this is the Italian position, so to speak. Because in the Italian position, these bishops are now targeting f2 if you're black or f7 if you're white, right? It's not quite the same on the queen side, but, you know, it's still similar because you could be threatening to, you know, knight, knight, knight with a fork on king and rook, okay? But here you've got obviously threat against the king directly. Um, so this is a classic pattern. And the classic defense here, I think, would be d4. Because then if pawn takes, you can actually just take with the knight. Bishop takes there, problem solved. Everything's gone. Let's see what happens. Queen e2? Queen e2. Well, I'm surprised. So, okay, now here, bishop there is playable, but then the king just moves away. Knight here is playable, rook just moves. But then knight here actually gives check and potentially wins the rook. I don't know what's going on here. E takes f4. Okay. Oh. Now here for me, I'd be tempted to play d4 hit the bishop, okay, d4 is defended by this knight, and also then discovered attack against this pawn. But d3 was played, now queen h4, oh, and just blunders this queen. Okay, so guys, not a, <laughs> you know, but, you know, well done. And what I notice here as well, this is a 15 minute rapid game, right? PB Morris has managed to lose it in 13 seconds. Let's just check, actually. Yeah, 
Oh no, it's a 15 plus 10. Right, so 15 plus 10. Okay, so to his credit, but he's, made, he, he's blundered his queen. And here's the key thing. He spent 29 seconds on that move. He spent 29 seconds on that move and not one of those seconds was spent doing a sanity check. Now this is something that I've been doing a lot recently, is just blundering. Got to do your sanity checks, simple as. Right, I mean, it's you can't say that white was in a great position here. <clears throat> so I think here, I would have just taken the pawn, right? In fact, let's have a quick look at the review because I, I, I'm curious. Okay, so there are blunders, okay. Blunders on both sides. Here, here, and that is a blunder because it gives away free material. So clearly, right, the line is, is that. So that's a blunder because the best move was take the pawn. Take the damn pawn and you're plus four already, okay? It's free material and it comes with tempo and it allows this, right? Like for the reasons that I gave out. So knight g4 is best. That's an excellent move. Even better, take the pawn with the knight. But then what if this? That's what I'd be worried about. Tax the queen. That would be a blunder. I'm thinking because maybe queen h5 were threatening mate. Do you think? Yes, it's a blunder because of queen h5. Wow. Interesting stuff. Gotta love the Vienna guys, but look. This, this is a key thing, you know, like I said, there's an argument to be made to develop, but in the opening phase of the game, right, development is your default. And if you can achieve something that you need to do, like help defend an under-defended piece or attack a piece and kick it away, for example, right? Like, you know, in the Scandinavian queen comes out, most common move, knight c3. You develop a piece and kick the queen, right? It just makes all the sense in the world. Um, so <clears throat> develop if you can, if it, if it carries you forward. But if there is, like I always say, if there is an immediate and present tactical threat or opportunity that you, that's right in front of you, um, it's okay to deviate and press pause on development. And in this instance, pawn takes pawn, right? comes with that and then this. So let's say, okay, knight can't go there or there because the queen takes it, okay? Can't go there. Right, this knight now has to go back, okay? Yeah, the best move from black here is knight g8, and then I'm thinking d4. Has to be d4. d4, and you're already plus 5.4 as white, because now the bishop has to go here, or here, or here, or here. That's all, right? Bishop b6 is the best move, apparently. Right? Oh, now it's saying queen g4. Queen g4 attacking this because the bishop is away from home. Right? And, you know, you're all over him like a rash. So, good lesson in there. Good lesson. Okay, let's move on to the third game. This has been um, suggested by Lock77777777. And let's see what he's... He, he, he said that this is a, <clears throat> and he's rated 871, his opponent's rated 1120. He's saying this is one of his top games of all time. So we've got Queen's Pawn opening and E6, this is the Horvitz defense. Don't know anything about this. Okay. And now we have G3 with a Fianchetto idea. Interesting. Okay, Knight comes out, Fianchetto the Bishop. D5. I mean, this is all relatively straightforward. Not like some of the other games we've seen. Bot boy. Okay. Um, bishop back to D6. So we've got like a, a reverse London happening on black's side of the board. Right. Bishop back here. Might have the pawn here. Might, might have the knight here. Might even play C5. Um, castles. Okay. 
This is the, the longer game of the three. Okay, black castles. And now c4, aggressive from white. Now Tony's attacking the center here. Okay. And h6. Yeah, I'm not 100% convinced by this. I mean, you've really, really got to be careful with this pawn move, right? Any of the king's bodyguard pawns, um, yes, it's stopping the knight coming there, it's stopping the bishop coming there. Um, but it always creates a hook, it creates a target for your opponent to attack. Let's see what happens, boys and girls. Okay, another temptation here, of course, is c5. Force that bishop back and try and crush, you know, maybe even like these ideas, really crush the queen side. Okay, but we develop, and that's a good thing. A6, this is pussyfooting play from black. I don't like that move. Okay, and develops. So this is a fairly normal setup. White has a slight advantage in terms of space, which means that he's controlling squares in his opponent's side of the board. But actually, with this bishop out, you know, you might argue that actually so is black. You know, black's got a bit of control over white side of the board as well. But I'm kind of... Whoa, okay, right. And now this is throwing down the gauntlet, right? Because... Now, obviously, we're threatening this, threatening a pawn fork. Both sides are cancelled. So, you know, breaking open the, the centre per se doesn't necessarily benefit one side or the other. But he's really saying to, to Black now, you need to capture here. Right? Because things are about to go down. Oh! Oh! 54 seconds... Okay, now here, white captures on there, threatens this knight, okay? Now, the, my first reaction is, well, why don't you just push e5 and win material, right? Because even if knight takes, pawn takes, you win two pieces. Um, but actually, this pawn capture threatens material anyway. So even if, like, a takes b5, you can still push the pawn. So you've still got that in your pocket, okay? And that's a really key thing as you're improving as an intermediate player, is, is that ability to say, okay, I've got this. <clears throat> it's like the game shows where they say, right, you've, you've won this, you've got, you've got 2,000 in the bank, no one's gonna take that away from you, that's yours, you're going home with that, but let's play on for the next big prize, yeah? That's the kind of mentality you need to go, okay, right, I can attack this knight now with this capture. Okay. And if the knight moves away, I still have this, right? No one's taking this away from me. Now, your opponent may choose to retreat the bishop or retreat the knight. Doesn't matter. You get a free knight anyway. So, good thinking. And takes. And now, yes. Okay, good. Good. Okay, 20 seconds thought. Comes there. Grabs material. Love it. Well done. Queen recaptures. Okay, now. Whenever you have a flurry of stuff like this and... Black here thought for six seconds over that move. That's fine. Um, you have to take stock. Okay. Uh, goldfishing is, is a really good thing to do. So if you're not familiar with a goldfish, just draw your um, kind of defensive structure. You can do it for your, your side. You can do it for your opponent's side. Okay. So basically, we're saying this pawn's defended twice. It's attacked twice. Okay. That knight's under attack, but then I can capture with a pawn inwards. That's no problem. Um, everything here is defended. This is all fine. Defending each other. Okay, I'm quite happy on white side or black side. That's undefended, undefended. Ha! Huh. Okay, defends that, defends that. Everything here is good. Knight defends that, but the knight itself is undefended. And actually so is that rook. Okay, so here you can see black structure has more weaknesses simply from the point of view of undefended pieces. Okay, now, ooh, putting your knight in the center of the board. Yes, we like this, precious. Yeah, knights love to be in the center of the board, right? They control an awful lot of squares from there, okay? Now, actually, a knight can control eight squares as long as it's anywhere in, in this square. So it's, it's the center plus 
the almost center, okay? Outside of there, it's limited because some of its squares are actually off the side of the board. Okay, black retreats the knight. Okay, because obviously trading knights here and pawn takes here hits the queen, not, not ideal. Okay, now what would I be playing here? Okay, so what I'd be thinking now is, this bishop's undefended, so is that pawn, right? So I'd definitely be thinking about queen b3. I'm also wanting to get this bishop off the mark. So the bishop could actually go here or here, where it actually almost plays the role of a pawn. Or even here, right? Breaking the, the pin, because currently the knight is kind of pinned, because if it moves, we lose a, a rook to the bishop. So I'd be thinking about moving that. Tony here plays a three, kicking the... Surely that doesn't work, right? How long did you think about it? 28 seconds. Guys rated 1100, 28 seconds and you put your bishop here. The pawn is not needed to defend the knight. The knight is already defended by that, okay? Knight is attacked one time, currently defended two times. Surely you take it. Good man. Right, and now we are up. Two minor pieces for a pawn. Goodness gracious me. All right. Now you have to think carefully because, for example, if we just take the pawn, you lose a rook. Not good. If the knight comes here, we're kind of attacking the queen, but then queen takes knight. And that's not great. I mean, you've got ideas of moving the knight with a discovery attack by the rook, but you're not winning anything there, okay? I think this looks okay. This looks possible. This looks possible. This is a problem because, again, you lose the knight. So what does Tony do? Okay, b5, knight b5. Again, attacking this undefended pawn. Now, what if pawn to c6? We can come back here. And then we're attacking the pawn twice with both knights. Oh, even knight d6. Getting right into your opponent's face. <clears throat> Actually more like... <sighs> My knight is now in your face. How do you like that, you son of a gun? I'm, and this, again, you can see this is another problem why the bishop is still in the way because uh, he could have taken this pawn, or can take this pawn, but right now the rook's undefended, okay? That's why you want your minor pieces off the back rank, leaving only major pieces, and then when your queen's free to move, because then the rooks defend each other. Right now that rook is an undefended piece. Okay, bishop comes out, and here black is starting to sweat. Oh, but now, look again, this is a theme of this video, right? You've just blocked your own defense, or attack of that, right? You blocked the attack of this, so now surely you can just take the pawn. Oh, even better! <laughs> yeah! Oh, look. Bishop has just undefended that square. Okay? If I make this move, what am I undefending? Fork. Consider yourself well and truly forked. Beautiful. Oh my good golly gosh. We are now plus seven in material points. And we still have this, actually. And that actually pins the bishop. Because then the rook can take the rook. Please take it. Yes, good man. Knight comes in here. I just trade off now. I barely even think about this. I'm, I'm like, I'm plus eight. I'll be sitting there going, okay, now, now my job is not screwing up the entire shooting party okay but this is great now this bishop's totally pinned and so's the rook because the rook's the only defender of the bishop yeah so just trade everything else off i would yes good man well done absolutely and now what now what do we do um i really want this bishop off the back rank i'm not liking it i think bishop to here to here is good and the reason is because it's defended by a pawn it defends that and everything's defended so you've made yourself a little yeah, it's a tall pawn, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now we... Yeah, that's my other thought. That's my first thought, trying to trade off queens. Of course he doesn't want to trade off queens. 
Okay, bishop off the back rank, jolly good. Bishop down here. Oh, queen c3. Okay, that's a thought. That's a bloody thought. Queen runs away again. Bishop now comes out. Okay, really taking advantage of the fact that, that these, these pawns are along light coloured squares, which means there's a happy hunting ground for the bishop all around here. <clears throat> oh. Okay, and now black plays h5. For some reason. My first thought here is queen to here because then you have the idea of bishop there with check then you can force an exchange of queens which is only going to benefit um, white because these two pieces are currently stuck. If the bishop moves, I mean the bishop could go there but then we trade rooks, right? The rook can only go there. Okay. But, White now plays the bishop there with check straight away, which is okay. I mean, the king can't really go there because then we have queen takes here. Um, okay. But yeah, I think for me, maybe queen there first, and then this has more bite because then you force the trade. And if you can get the queens off the board, a plus eight advantage is even bigger. Okay, now queen to here. Is he threatening to trade the queen for a rook and a bishop? I mean, it makes sense. Then you'd leave yourself with two rooks and two bishops against a solo queen, which has to be winning, but it's, I tell you, it's bold. Bishop back, oh, oh yes. Oh yes, I like that one. Oh, we like that one very much, Precious, don't we? Okay, so if the bishop takes the bishop, queen takes rook, check, king has to go to here. Okay, and it's all going to end in tears. So what else is possible? Not a lot. Pushes a pawn for, because he's got nothing else. Bishop takes bishop, out right wins the bishop. The rook takes now is just all over by the shouting. It's all over by the shouting. Queen comes in here threatening mate. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, in my excitement, I missed that. So, two thoughts, okay? Now, that is checkmate. If black had another turn now, black would win. So, one option is king f1. So, queen comes here, king comes out. And quite honestly, the queen is, you know, the queen's only really got light squares to, to play with around here. Um, we've also got this at some point maybe as well. So I think king f1, you probably survive very well. Other thought is this check, but then after king to there, I don't know. That doesn't really achieve anything. Another idea, though, is queen f1. Queen f1, queen comes here, we trade queens, happy days. Queen, otherwise, take, we take out the pawn. So that is probably the best move in it. And he finds it. He only goes and finds it, boys and girls. Do you know, I can see why you're saying this is, your, you know, one of the best games of your life. Okay, now. See... If that pawn hadn't moved, we have rook here, king here, queen takes here, would be nice. Queen takes there anyway. Yeah, eliminate the threat, good thinking, love it very much indeed. Black's desperate here now. Of course, white's down to four and a half minutes, so we've got to move. Rook takes pawn, excellent. We have now disconnected the rooks, have to bear that in mind. Okay, you can see black is trying stuff, but surely now, like rook a8, Okay, bishop down here, we are covering the promotion path. Okay, that is sensible chess thinking, liking it. Also, again, we're blocking the defense of this pawn. 
Queen comes out here looking at the rook. Check. Excellent. King here. Now what do we do? Because you can't take there. Queen takes. Can't play queen there. You'd like to do that. No. Rook here. Probably best. What happens? Oh. Oh, I like that. That's elegant. Yes. Hit the queen. And now we've got queen takes f5. It's probably better than rook takes. Oh, that's an interesting move. I think maybe this, though. Queen there. Check. And he can't go anywhere on here. Or there, or there, or there. Okay, so queen here. King has to come here. And then queen takes there as checkmate. Probably better. Now, black does something with his queen. Oh, it gives check. Push pawn. And that is not mate. And that is not mate. Oh, it is. Oh, because the bishop, bishop's got in that. Okay. So nice move. Um, well done. Well done. Excellent game there. I enjoyed that very much indeed. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, and like I say, watch this space. There's something coming up very soon. Thanks for watching. See you soon.